Let's take a look at the mechanics of creating a basic run cycle in Adobe Animate. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome to a run cycle tutorial. Today we're going to be using the core concept that Richard Williams made famous in the late 80s to create a pretty basic run cycle. Uh, I've already created a walk cycle tutorial and you can find the tag uh, up above to go and watch that one for now. Um, but if you're interested in the run, then you're in the right place. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so in the first contact point, very similar to the walk cycle, we have our character's foot touching the floor, but with no weight placed on it yet. So let's just draw ourselves, our character's body is gonna be leaning forwards into the run, which is very useful, very useful to know. And the front leading leg we can just have extending forwards like so with the heel just coming into contact with the ground but with no weight placed on it yet. This is our first contact pose. The rear leg at this first pose is going to be actually lifted off the ground already with the heel kicked up into the air. Okay. The toes would be trailing behind the body at this point as well. And this will be our back leg, which will indicate just by filling this one in like that. So if you think about it, when you're running, your arms pump. Now, the arms can be quite distracting in a run cycle, so you really do want to focus on the movement of the legs. But what will usually happen is that your obviously the opposite arm to the leg that is forward is going to be trailing backwards. And that's going to be, you can think about it just, just slightly higher than vertical to the shoulders with the elbows still on the rise. So the elbow itself could be facing downwards still. And we're gonna have our character with pumped fists for this run, which I think makes sense. The other arm, you can kind of think of as like a direct opposite. If you were to make a kind of hinge shape like this, you can think of that as the leg coming up through the body and then this arm coming back down. So the forearm would follow that downward shape. And then what's nice to do is actually to indicate a turning inwards of the fist, something like that. Okay. That looks a little bit tight to me. So I'm just going to grab that with my free transform tool and holding control. I'm just going to pull out these edges a little bit. To something closer like that. Now this is our first contact point, the point where the heel makes contact with the floor. We've got a straight leg complemented by a curved leg and we've got uh, the pumped arms in this kind of zigzag motion. Now obviously the next contact point will be the exact same pose. So we'll just make that on a new layer and we'll arrange these into a timeline later. I'm just showing you the poses at the moment. The contact starts the run and the next contact finishes the run. So I'm just going to lock off this layer. Actually, let's, yeah, let's just move it. You really don't want to draw your poses running in place because that's how you get weird feet sliding issues and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll draw our second contact next to it. And let's do this in a different color. Let's do it in red. Okay, and I'm just going to copy my head and body so that my character doesn't shift around in size too much. Okay. So we've got the head and body now. They're going to be at the same height because this is the exact same pose, just the other way around. So we're going to try and draw the exact same thing, but this time the leading leg that is forwards is actually going to be the back leg. So we'll have the leg extending to the floor like we did before. But this leg is going to be the rear leg or the back leg, meaning our front leg is the one that is kicking upwards. Again, with the heel being dragged along and the toes at their farthest point, and using the lasso tool, I can just come through 
whoop, and erase these sections to make it a little bit cleaner. And I'll do that for these as well once I'm happy. But I know that's what I want to do. Okay. So we have our legs in the same position, just flipped around. Now the back leg is trailing on the floor. Also, your shoulders turn when you run, just a little bit like this. So whilst the shoulder was pinned here in our first contact pose, it's actually going to be pinned more like here in this front one, because as you pump your arms forwards, just hit the green screen there. As you pump your arms forwards, you rotate your body. It's inevitable. So this forward arm is now this pose here, but forwards on the front of the body. So the elbow is actually going to turn down a little bit and he's going to have a slightly smaller wrist, but it's going to be a similar pose, something like that. That's again, perhaps a little bit tight. So let's just move him out a bit and indicate the turned wrist there. The back arm is now going to be in the same pose as this, but it will be behind the body. So again, slightly higher than the shoulder line. And we'll just come in, draw a very simple, and I'm trying to keep this character very simple. And we'll do all the details later because I want to get focused on the mechanics of the run. For something like this. So we can check our pose by just dragging it over our guy here. Now it's fine that it's not exactly the same because that's how you get an inorganic run. And we'll be going back to our first contact pose when we do our second step anyway. So what we basically need, and we'll arrange these properly later on, but we now have our two contact poses. The next pose we need to do is the passing position. And the passing position is in the bang middle between the two poses. So I'll make a new layer in between them and we'll call it PP, <laughs> which always makes me laugh. And we'll make it green and we'll call it the passing position. Now the passing position for the legs is pretty much the direct opposite of what we've done. At this point, we've got the leading leg touching down onto the floor. And what we've got now is the leading leg pushing the body off of the floor. So the, um, the front leg here is now gonna be positioned backwards up on the toes, pushing the uh, character along. So once again, we're just gonna grab our character's body. Because why not? It's there. And let's pop him right in the middle. I'll just lock off these other layers so I don't accidentally draw or select them. And we have our passing position base starting point. So as our character is raised up on his toes a little bit, he may come up ever so slightly in this position. Not too much because in the next position is the down and the up. We want to make sure that there is that comparison between the two, but just a little bit higher than your contact positions. You want the front leg because our front leg was forward here. We now want our front leg going backwards. And we can use the other drawings here as kind of a guide to get the correct height. But we basically want the foot pushing off the floor with the heel raised. Okay. Now that we've got that that we're slightly happy with, we can actually place it over. So we've now got our correct positioning as well. Okay. Um, I'm not super happy with that leg. I think it needs to be sort of more extreme maybe, but maybe it's just the guidelines that are throwing me off. Let's see if it is, it is for now. So we have our front leg pushing backwards. We now need our, um, basically the reverse of this pose here again. But this time he's going to be pumping forwards, pumping forwards like this. So his knee is going to be raised. And we'll just actually draw in his body so we don't shrink it by accident. But his leg is going to be raised up. But the uh, lower half of his leg is still going to be kind of dragging behind like this. A lot of animators draw it slightly turned towards the body as well for that extra sort of comedic effect, but um, the foot is raised flat like this, like ready to um, hit the floor. Let's fill that in. And we'll trim it down a little bit as well. It's a bit chongy, 
chonky at the moment. So it's now upper leg coming forwards. And this leg is starting to swing outwards like so. When it comes to the arms, the um, I've just got my reference sheet down here if you see me looking, <laughs> looking down. Um, when it comes to the arms, this arm here has started to move forwards past the middle line of the body. Okay. But it hasn't started to rise really yet. So what I like to do is just draw it kind of pumping along the same line parallel to the knee. And with run cycles, it's best to come back and tweak anyway as you go. So don't worry too much. If you're not super happy with it, just get somewhere where you're relatively happy and keep moving forwards. The back arm <clears throat> at this point, if you imagine it's swinging backwards, so we'll probably only actually see something like that poking out from the back of the body. Okay. Um, which is good. And this is our passing position. Now this should be bang in the middle of our frames. I've drawn some of this on the wrong layer already, I believe. Yes, I have. This is why I should lock layers. So I'll just cut that. There we go. And I'll paste it in place on its correct layer. Um, so we now have the pretty much amount of space that our character is going to be traveling throughout each single step. But what I'm actually going to do is separate them out a little bit further so it's really easy to see um, the stages that we're doing. So I will just position them at the extremes of the stage. Obviously, this isn't correct because where his heel touches the floor, his foot would then be raising, um, but just for illustrative purposes. After you've done the passing position, the next step to do is the down position, which exists between the first contact and the passing position. So let's get a new color for this, perhaps a pink. We'll add a new layer in and we'll call it down. And this position goes right here down. Now you probably guess what's going to happen down. Like the walk cycle is when the weight comes down onto the foot. He's placed his heel on the floor. It's um, the toes have touched the floor and the weight is coming down onto it. So uh, the back leg is going to start to swing inwards a little bit more and the arms actually become wider at this point, similar to the walk cycle. So let's do that. We'll copy our body again. But this time I'm going to add a little bit of a curve as his weight causes him to hunch up a little bit. Obviously, this is a cartoony style. Um, drawing so it doesn't have to be super realistic and in our down position our character's weight bends the leading leg slightly as he puts all his weight through it into the floor and the foot is flat on the floor like so just like that okay the weight is now straight down the middle, almost like he's been cut in half. Okay. Um, you can extend this, you know, uh, with a little bit of artistic license, but the rear leg is now mostly hidden behind the body with the knee kind of coming in here. And the calf is being trailed along, pulled behind. I like to indicate just a little bit of that knee. The foot is being fully dragged by this point. So you could even do something like that. Boom, like so, okay. So the foot here is being fully dragged. If that doesn't look like a good silhouette to you, of course you can do whatever you like. Do something more similar to this, okay? Now, the back arm is actually raising higher at this point. Uh, sorry, excuse me, the arm that is at the back is actually raising higher at this point. And the fists are pumped and raised ready for the downswing that is coming on the next frame. Okay, like this. The uh, rear arm, <laughs> the one that's in shadow that was previously sort of pumped ready and like coiled into the body, that's now going to start moving outwards a little bit, almost similar to the front arm, but it's gonna be extended more than the previous frame. 
So what we might do is just, once again, extend this out just a little bit, just to get that contrast. Okay. Um, this is your down position. The most important thing is that your character is clearly going down on the head. So you can see there should be just a little bit of a curve. Something like that when it comes to your character's run. Okay. Uh, that's it for the down position. The next position is the up position, which goes between the passing position and the contact pose. So we'll just pop that in there and we'll go to up. This is the one which differs mostly from a walk cycle because at this point your character is fully off the floor. Okay, so we have our up position. I'll just call this one up. Um, and at this point your character is completely left the floor. See, at, at all the other poses, there's still one foot on the floor, um, but the up position is the biggest difference between a walk cycle and a run cycle. So let's once again copy our character's head here and his body. And we'll give the, the body a bit more of an arch <clears throat> as he raises himself upwards. And we'll make sure that he does go upwards by just shifting that body position up a little bit. Let's lock the other layers and I'll just move that back there. So you can see now we have all of our positions, contact down, passing position up, and the other contact. This isn't the full run cycle. We need to add in a couple more frames, but let's finish this up position before we do that. Now at this point, um, it's pretty much very similar to the contact pose, apart from everything is in the air, okay? So the trailing leg, which is the front leg at this point, that is going to be fully in the air. like so, with the foot dragging behind, like that. The rear leg, which is now the leading leg, is going to be um, way high up in the air, almost horizontal. And the calf is actually going to be similar to this arm here, is actually going to be like tucked into itself, okay? Something like this, but you'll clearly see if you got it right when it comes to the animation process. Um, I, for example, I think that needs to be just a little bit more down. And you can tweak it when you come to animating, um, when you see it in motion, like so. Like already I can see that he's a little bit wonky there. So what I'm actually going to do um, is just grab all of him. I'll pin his head in position and holding control, I'll just tweak and maybe just even rotate him a little bit. Something like that. Okay. The arms in this position are pretty much the reverse of the uh, contact position, but uh, this is actually a coil inwards action. Okay. Meaning that in the previous frame, this arm is actually going to have to be extended further outwards, something like that. And then it coils in for the contact. So let's actually just take that and move it over here. And I'll hide this contact pose at the moment because it's just a little bit in the way. Um, so we have our pumped fist getting ready to coil back in on itself. And the rear arm is doing pretty much the same thing. But um, as you can see at this point, it's rising up backwards. We have this arm out the front. It begins to rise backwards and now uh, it's coming out again, but it's not as far as the contact pose yet. Okay. So you want it to be angled down slightly, but beginning its upward swing. Something like that. Okay. So here we have pretty much all of our key poses. Uh, the other two poses that are left are just straight in-betweens that we need to add in specific positions to get the sort of um, uh, ambulation, is that the right word? The motion of the run correct. And these go between the down and the passing and between the up and the contact. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is just give ourselves a little bit more of a timeline space here. And we'll call this one in-between. And we'll need another one here 
So this gives us all of the frames we actually need for our animation. So what I'm going to do now is just line them up so that we can know where to place our in-betweens. So I'm going to grab all of our layers and I'm just actually going to drag these frames onto a single layer. I know we just spent a while naming them, but that was just for illustrative purposes. Obviously, when you're doing this, you'd do it all on one layer anyway. There's no need to separate them out into different layers. Let's delete these. And what we'll do now is turn on our onion skin by clicking this um, option here. And I'll just pop everything roughly in the middle of the stage. And I'm just going to align our characters' heads. So I can see already I've messed this up because I haven't um, brought our character's body down at all. So I'm just going to squish him a little bit. Boop, like that, as if he's hunched up on himself. These are just the very rough drawings. Nothing on our in-between yet. Let's just reduce this onion skin to one frame so it's less distracting. Um, but we do want our down position. Basically, we want the, the um, heads to be in alignment here. And we're just running in place. OK, so here we have contact down. You can see the motion there. Uh, let's extend our ground plane as well. So we have contact down. The arms come out, the legs move in. We have our passing position. The leg makes its way backwards and the other arm starts to rise. We have our up position where he's left the floor. And I think what I'll do is just push that a little bit further. And then our contact position when he hits the floor again. OK, so the next um, thing to do is just these two in-betweens. And that's very easy. You just turn on your onion skin, reduce it to a single frame, and you can literally just draw these in-betweens like you would any other normal in-betweens. What I'll do first, though, is I'll take my character and on each frame, I'll make him the same dark gray to make our life a little bit easier. And there we go. Right. So let's draw some straight in-betweens. In between. All we're doing here is going through and trying to find the middle point between these frames just to add that piece of correct motion to it. So nothing too crazy. Just trying to find the middle ground between this nearly fully raised leg and this leg that's trailing behind. Perhaps we'd have the foot kind of visible behind the leg like that. Um, this arm here is at the back and in this next frame it's swung all the way forwards. So we'll have that be somewhere in the middle. And altering the positions of these in-betweens really does change your character's run. So experiment with these until you get something that you're happy with, basically. And the next arm is coming back here. So we'd probably just see the forearm poking out. And there is our first in-between. Let's do the second in-between, turn our onion skin back on. <clears throat> and again, we're just finding the middle points between these frames. I'm being very rough here because I'm conscious this is already quite a long tutorial. And I'll do all of the cleaning up in fast forward anyway. His leg here might be hovering in the um, air in a very similar position for a bit too long, but we'll see when we come to the cleanup stage. Once we've drawn all these frames, essentially we can tweak to our heart's content. So I'm being very rough, as you can see. I'm literally just trying to get a feel for the motion. OK, let's turn off our onion skin and have a look at our characters run. I'll loop him. This is obviously only a single step at the moment. 
but you can kind of see where the motion is going to be for this. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit to make the next step. I'm just going to grab all of my frames and holding Alt, I'll just drag them over a bit until I get these next poses. Now obviously we've got the contact here with the um, character's rear leg now forwards and hitting the floor. And this contact is the same position, but obviously our first one. So what I'm actually going to do is just grab all of them except that frame and just drag it over to replace next to these contact frames and I'll just remove the excess. So now we have two frames, just duplicates essentially, but with our original contact position here. All this means is now I just need to come through and I will just swap out these legs. So the leg that was in front is now going to be behind and the leg that was behind is now going to be in front. So the way I like to do this is just to come in like that. I now know um, this is going to be our front leg. So I just like to, in this very rough stage, chop out the leg like this and then fill in the back leg. And I'll do the same with the arm. I'll chop out this arm like so. And then I'll fill in the back one. So as you can see, we've now got our other step. I don't recommend doing this if you're you know, do, taking your run serious, but if you're just practicing, this is fine. Uh, and we'll do the same thing for the rest of the frames in time-lapse mode, and we'll come back when it's done because literally all I'm doing is just drawing in where I think that front leg is gonna be, cutting out the excess content with the lasso tool, and then coloring in the remaining sections of the other leg so that we're essentially swapping the legs out. Okay, so I'll do that quickly now. <clears throat> so what you'll have, or what you should have once you've done that section is 12 frames. And this is our full run cycle. This is all animated on ones, not on twos, because obviously he's moving very quickly. So let's take a look. Now, obviously this is the very rough stage. So all we've got here is um, our sketches. But as you can see already, we've, we've kind of got some of that motion that we're after. We've got the arms swinging back and forth um, and we've got the legs moving in the correct way. Now, this is the point where you're going to want to tweak your animation. For example, here, let's look at the legs first. I'm quite happy with the way the legs move here, but it kind of hangs just a little bit too much in these three positions for my liking. So what I'm actually going to do is just grab this piece of leg and I'm just going to move him down slightly. So we get more of a tucking in motion. That looks much nicer to me. Let's see if I need to do that on the other one as well. So this will be on the up position. Let's just swing that down a little bit too. Just so that we can tweak because otherwise this in between and then this first contact pose are very similar. Now we get a slightly more um, smoother motion to the legs. Let's go through and look at the arms. Quite happy with these, I think. I think what we need here is just, again, a little bit more of an upswing because we've got this contact pose that just needs tweaking closer to the down. There's also quite a lot of movement there. So what I'll do is remove this arm and we'll just bring it out so that you can see his fist. That looks much nicer. I'll just tidy up that little gap I made. Bam. So I'm pretty happy with this at the moment, but we can do um, a lot more if we just add some nice additional secondary animation to this. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. I think, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the way this looks, but it needs some additional animation on top. So we're gonna rename this layer to main, and then we'll just do a few extra layers. I think before in the walk cycle, we gave him a hat, a uh, backpack, and some floppy shorts. So we'll do the same to this character here. We've got a hat, a backpack, and we'll do some shorts as well. So this is um, a great way to add visual interest to your animation with some secondary motion or reactive overlap motion. For example, we had him wearing a flat cap. So let's take the um, down position. 
Uh, or let's do it straight from the beginning. Let's take our contact position. And he's running super fast. So if he were wearing a cap, the brim would be bent backwards in the wind for sure. Okay, let's turn on our onion skin as well. As he moves downwards, I think at this point, it would try to bend down because of the gravity, but it probably couldn't because of the, how fast he's running. But as he moves up, like so, it would definitely frame behind, at least, begin to flop back forwards. On the up position, as he's moving upwards, it would drag that hat down. So it's now, instead of like this, it's more like this. Okay. Then back down to the in-between. As he's moving downwards again, it would start to bend back up. Got that contact pose, the down, pushing it even further. As he rises up, it would start to bend back out again. Same with this passing position, start to bend back out. And we're back to the up position, into our last in-between, where he moves down quite a bit, and then back to the original. So we've got that flopping hat brim, which looks quite nice. It's going to be flapping all over the place and we'll tidy it up when we get to our next section. But um, the backpack at this point uh, would probably be bouncing all over the place. If you remember from our walk cycle tutorial, it was kind of stuck to the back a little bit. But here it's going to be flopping everywhere. So let's take a look. He's going to have his contact. Let's have the bag. Be something like this. Okay. Now, as he's moving down, we kind of put the bag in the same position, perhaps even a little bit higher, because it's dragging off this body. Like the body is the driving force, and the um, backpack is like being dragged along by it. Then, as um, it moves through the in between, we'd have the bag sort of slam downwards like so. And then the driving force of that downwards action would be continued as we drag upwards. It's going to rise a little bit with the body. And I think we've accidentally grown the backpack a bit there. So we'll just shrink him back down. But at this point, it's still stuck to it because the body's moving upwards. Okay. But then here, it's going to start to lift. Okay, so we've got that weight moving upwards. Then we're back down to our first contact position. So we could try copying these, seeing what it looks like. So we've got that kind of bouncing up and down motion of the backpack as well. Okay. Um, let's turn off onion skin. And whilst the uh, backpack's fine, it's actually the other way around. You can see that kind of bouncing up and down. Okay. For the shorts, you just need to think about which way his legs are moving. If it's moving backwards here, for example, we know the leg is moving backwards here. Then his shorts are going to be dragging forwards like so. Let's use that as a starting point. His shorts are still moving backwards here, so really quite fast. So we're dragging them really far. Again, he's got some baggy shorts, so dragging really far. At this point, however, I'd say the shorts are going to start to catch up. So before they've been pressed against this back leg, but now as they begin to be dragging forwards, the gap's probably going to be more at the top especially at this point here where they kind of bunched up on themselves. And then here, definitely, because they're being forced forwards. Same for here. And on this pose. And at this point, it might start to separate from both sides of the leg. And then here it's moving backwards, so the drag all comes back to the front again before moving back into our first position, which we now know as the drag moving forwards. So now you've got that swinging motion there on the shorts. 
Okay, um, it'll be exactly the same on the back leg, so I won't go through and do that twice. But this is pretty much it. Um, I'd like to do some tidying up on the backpack's motion and the hat and stuff uh, when I clean up the actual animation, which I'll do now. Um, the rest of this is probably going to be in time lapse mode, but I'll explain all of my thought processes as I do it. And then just like we did with the walk cycle, uh, I'll bring it into Procreate to do the finished thing just because I prefer doing my line work there. So um, let's pop all of this in a folder. We can call that roughs and we'll do some tidying up. I will lock and outline these layers and I'll give myself a new layer on top with a bunch of blank keyframes and it's tidying up time. Okay, so when it comes to tidying up my animations, uh, I like to use this as a opportunity to just tie everything down. Basically make sure I know where everything is going to go. Um, just little things like the backpacks flapping tassels and the rim of the hat and stuff like that. Um, this is the stage where I really sort of sort those bits out. Um, so I'm just going through here. Each frame I'm taking our roughs that we brought in from Adobe Animate. And once again, I'm back in Procreate for this section just to keep it consistent with the walk cycle tutorial. Uh, I tie down everything, I make sure my lines are nice and neat, um, but the biggest thing I'm focusing on at this stage is uh, consistency of size, so making sure his head doesn't um, grow or shrink, uh, same with his body and the lengths of his limbs and things like that. When it comes to adding colour, uh, I usually like to just create an outline for like I'm doing here, fill in that outline with a single colour and then come back through and um, sort of clip the content to the edges of the character and then just color in the sections I need. This works pretty well for this simple style of illustration that uh, I've got going on here. So this stage is not really much to talk about, we're just tying everything down, coloring it all in, and then we can take a look at the final product. And there you have it, our finished product. You can see that adding the secondary animation of the bouncing bag, hat and shorts really does add a lot to this animation, otherwise it would be quite a basic run cycle. Um, but this is a great way to practice your run cycles. Just have a basic frame series like this with some simple bouncing and you're good to go. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time on TipTap. Massive thank you to my level two and above members, WN62, Ian Costello, Rob V, Jason Carruddy, MPD, Maeva, Vola Furs, Melam Hoover, Josh C, Ursula Fermanska, The Saucier, Lali Lulolo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Kerry, Jobs Animations, Sergio Digalado, Ralika M, Narain Abdilla, Barbara Resna, Lone Wolf 16, Ira D, Political Psychology, Maybe Sharma Cross, Kevin Murphy, Mariam Devar, JK Digital Creations, and Jeremy Stewart. You guys are bloody lovely. Thank you so much. Become a Tip Titan by clicking that join button below and become part of the Tip Tut Zone. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.